All right, this was my second game of the tournament, and let's jump right in. The first thing to note is that there is Guild Spy on the Imperium row, and I think uh, that's one of the most powerful and impactful cards in the deck, and I have to think about that when picking my leader. I'm going second. Um, Sunny D and Limonades have already picked their leaders, and um, I think Fade Rotha is both a very flexible leader and also um, because he can place a spy with his first signet ring play, um, that's pretty relevant in a game with Guild Spy. Um, if I get it round one, I can play it as my first action and immediately occupy the Bene Gesserit spy space. Um, or if I end up being able to buy Guild Spy even better, then I can use it round one or two and just put a spy on any faction space and it's pretty good. So my first decision here after Deep goes to Fremkit is what to do with this hand. Um, I don't think it's worth early revealing with zero actions in this position for Guild Spy and uh, I guess it would be Sardaukar coordination. Um, instead, I want to play my diplomacy for sure. So I do that and I pick up the contract that gives a spy because again, with Guild Spy in the game, that seems particularly relevant and it's just a good contract in general. Unfortunately for me, Sunny D reveals on his very first action and buys Guild Spy and Sardaukar Coordination. Um, and that actually leaves me in a slightly annoying position where the only access that I have left is yellow. Um, so I could go to Secure Contract um, and draw a card. But the problem is that the, the good card in the row is Stilgar, which costs six. And I still have two daggers in my deck as Seek Allies. Drawing my ring is bad too, so there's kind of only one good draw. So I actually uh, don't think that drawing a card for secure contract is a good idea. I should uh, just reveal and get Stilgar. Um, technically, I also have the option of going to Haga Basin, but I don't think that's going to be worth it, even though I do get to go into the combat and get some money. Um, also, because I have zero daggers, I know I can't win the combat. I might be able to tie for first, but I don't think that's very valuable. So um, with all that considered, I'm going to end up early revealing and buying Stilgar. So while we were playing this game, um, a couple of the players couldn't be on VC, and so we ended up conversing in the chat. And because of it being a game with Guild Spy, there ended up being quite a bit of table talk, more than any other game that I've played. One drawback of early revealing here is red and yellow are both getting really great deals on the combat. One troop for three Solari, two troops for two Solari and a mouse. I was kind of hoping that Gurney would decide to put in more troops, come over the top of red and win the combat, but that, that didn't happen. I'm pretty confused by um, Limonades' first action of going to Imperial Basin, I wonder what, was, what that was about. Um, maybe he was thinking about going to Espionage? I don't know. But that seems uh, sketchy to me. On to round two. And one thing that I'd like to be able to do is go to Arakeen with my ring and put down two spies on factions in order to guarantee that Blue will be locked out of at least two of them. But on the other hand, that's not really playing into a strategy for me. And another thing that I kind of want to do is get something going for myself. I've got Stilgar. I'd like to have something more than just Stilgar. So instead, I go to Fremkit, which is going to get me towards having access to worms. Uh, it seems like that's always a good thing to do in the early game. Um, and I put in two troops, which in retrospect, I'm not sure I agree with that. I think maybe one troop would have been smarter here. I do have two daggers, um, but blue also has two daggers. Um, we know because their first hand um, was just seven persuasion. And uh, now I've, I've, I've left Arakeen open for them. They 
kind of want to block me from going there because they don't want me to be able to put down spies. So I have kind of put myself in a bit of a bad situation here, I think. So it is probably good for me that um, Limonades went to Desert Tactics because that blocked Muad'Dib from getting there and getting too from an influence. Now I'm in a situation where there's three of us fighting for the combat and any of the three of us could, could really win. I think it ends up being the case that I need to go in here uh, because I've already committed two troops. If I don't put in more troops, um, there's a couple problems. One of them is that probably either yellow or blue is going to win the conflict and get a Fremen influence, and they're going to get to hooks. Um, blue, not immediately, but the next time that they can play a faction access card, they can get access probably. So we think that next turn one of them is going to get to hooks. It, I'd much rather it be me um, getting that from an influence. And I don't think my opponents can do anything better than tie me. So therefore, I'm going to end up putting in my third troop. This is a tough calculation. And what I wish would happen here is that yellow would not put in another troop because that's really forcing my hand in recalling my spy for an extra two strength. Um, Blue, of course, wants me to recall the spy, so um, puts in another troop. And now, if I don't recall my spy, I'm getting third place instead of tying for first. So, of course, I'm going to have to recall my spy. I pick up a Fremen card to go with Stilgar. Um, because I'm going to need to find a way to get some points this game, and buying Spice Must Flows with Stilgar is uh, not, not a bad path. So as you can see, blue and I end up tying with 10 strength, and yellow comes in, in uh, third with 9 strength, which I really think he should not have put in the fourth troop. It, it um, certainly didn't turn out well for him. As a result, no one won the combat, so we're all a little bit behind. Um, some value has been lost. That tends to make the game go longer, but on the other hand, Guild Spy is going to make the game go shorter. I think this is overall bad news for me. I want lots of points to be handed out like candy um, in addition to um, Guild Spy existing, because that might help compensate for its existence. So yellow gets a spy down on Fremen, which is nice to have at least one spy blocking a faction spot, but the first one doesn't really matter. It's the second one that matters, and we're, I don't know that we're going to get to two. Sunny gets to play guild spy and put down a spy um, on the spacing guild. It's pretty strong. Luckily for me, it seems Muad'Dib does not have faction access this turn. Um, so it is I who get to get my hooks. So that is an excellent bit of news. Now, um, obviously, I, I think it's worth getting both the Fremen influence and going to Siege Tower this round. And because of that, I'm not going to use Stillguard to get the Fremen uh, influence. I'm going to use dip Diplomacy instead. I don't have any option of which space to go to because I don't have water. So I'm going to cycle my deck and draw a card, which is, you know, a little too bad because still bears in there um, in my hand right now. Put in one troop. There's just no way that I'm not going to want to put in a troop. Um, I might put in more or I might not.
So blue uses starter card coordination, spending all of their spice. And this is interesting because it actually reduces the likelihood that they can next round um, go to espionage. But, and I think they might have calculated this out, um, they're only putting in three troops. I think they're counting on tying red um, and this getting second place and getting a spice. I wasn't sure whether or not Muad'Dib was going to have two daggers, but maybe Sunny was paying attention to that. I'm not sure. So my decision right now is whether to put in more troops. And I ultimately end up deciding not to put in more troops. I, I've i been finding recently that it, it's just really nice to have um, some resources to take advantage of opportunities. And this doesn't seem like a particularly important combat to me, even though winning combats is good and I don't really want blue to win anything um, because they already have the guild spy advantage. Um, I feel like one troop for third place is probably as about a good a, a deal as four troops for first place. Um, probably better actually, because I'd rather have the three troops. I'd, 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 I'd rather have some uh, strength in reserve to take advantage of cool things happening. So Muad'Dib does indeed have two, two daggers, so they end up tying. I get third. I think I got the better end of that deal there. Uh, they get an intrigue card, but they are both using six str strength um, instead of my two strength. So they're spending four strength for an intrigue. I have six, and I have an interesting choice here. My default is to buy more faction access, but um, thinking about my Stilgar, it's actually pretty pretty nice to get some extra rebel cards. Uh, sorry, rebel suppliers, uh, namely uh, because they're Fremen cards. Um, I think about it a little more, and this is both going to help me win combats, and it's going to help me get spice must flows. So that's what I end up going with. I can buy two of them, and then. Every card I bought is a Fremen card so far. All right, blue, blue locks down, three spies on factions. The end is near. However, on the other hand, the combat is Spice Freighters, and that is really good news for me because, well, for one thing, uh, as you can see, I'm about to be able to call a Sandworm into combat because no one blocked me, so that's great. Um, I think probably uh, someone should have done that. Um, this this was a really key turn for me, be, me to be able to do it because I've got a giant pile of Spice, I've got a nice pile of troops, and I'm the only one with hooks. This is gonna be a very important combat. Um, the table talk continues in the chat and I am you know, trying to spin this uh, as, oh, I'm, I'm just uh, trying to do my part to stop Blue from getting a whole bunch of points from Guild Spy. Um, and that's certainly a nice side benefit if I can pull that off, but it does seem like the main benefit of the combat is that I'm getting a large number of points. And I, I do think everyone knows that, but you might as well just, uh, if there's table talking going on, participate in it. One possibility is I could have, instead of using, in, instead of using Fideik and Stilton, I could have used my Dune the Desert Planet. Um, that's arguable. Uh, this way is one more troop. The other way is one more water. 
I was thinking I might need the troop. Um, wasn't totally clear, but I just felt better about putting a little bit more strength for this combat. Okay, so blue reveals that their pondering had been about whether to early reveal. They have nine persuasion, so they decide to early reveal and get their three faction bumps and a spice must flow point. So that is what an insane round for them, huh? Um, <clears throat> but I mean, keep in mind they did have to forgo a faction bump in order to do that early reveal. So I guess it's really just two faction bumps in a victory point, which is, you know, still very good. Still very, very, very good. On the other hand, I'm not complaining because this combat is very good for me. It both matches my symbol. I'm going to be able to buy two points with all my spice. I'm going to get two influence, which I need. It's just pretty great. I also finally get to fulfill my Arakeen contract. Um, and I could send my spy to a faction right now, uh, but actually because I bought the two rebel suppliers, becomes very valuable to get spies on city spaces. Um, so that's my new plan. Spies on city spaces, rebel supplier for troops, reveal Stilgar for lots of persuasion by Spice Must Flow. That should get me the rest of the way towards 10 points. There are no Fremen cards to buy for three, so I don't buy any cards. So now there's consideration for where to spend my bumps. Um, the safer thing to do, I think, would be one on Emperor and then one on Bene Gesserit or Spacing Guild with the assumption that I'll be able to pick up the other one. Um, and I think that would have been a lot smarter. I definitely should have done that. Um, part of my mindset here, though, was um, playing a little bit of a political game and making as though to um, still be stopping blue, just trying to slow down blue. Um, there's also the consideration that if I get one more Emperor influence, all I need is one more, then I get a, 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 a spy, which is actually pretty good too. Um, and maybe this was the right way to go and I should have just followed up better, but I don't end up getting that Emperor point. So it ended up being a wasted influence, which is too bad. So I have a pretty good position and hand for going into the combat again. Um, yellow says dibs on the combat. Uh, I feel like this is not a super important combat, so maybe that's fine. Yellow does get to go after me, um, which means that if I go in too strong, we're going to end up fighting over it, and that's not what I want. I'm in a great situation here. The top card of my deck is uh, Rebel Supplier, as I recall. Um, it's the only card left in my deck, uh, so I know it. So I know that Stilgar is going to be able to reveal for six, and then uh, Convincing Argument and Doom makes seven, eight, nine. Uh, so regardless of which of the other two cards I play, I'm going to be able to buy a Spice Must Flow this turn if I can just draw that one card. And I know I can draw that one card because I have a Spy on Arakeen. Uh, but I could also draw it by uh, recalling the Spy for a draw at Siege Tavern. What I'm going to have to think about is whether I want the extra two troops from the Rebel Supplier, or whether I want to use my Signet Ring to trash, and then get the Spice and Sword from revealing the Rebel Supplier. The Persuasion on the Ring isn't going to help either way, because... I'm already getting to nine. 10 is not gonna make a difference. I'm not gonna buy a one cost card. I 
I ended up using my ring. Um, my reasoning being, I think the trash and the spice are about as good as the two troops, but I want to advance my ring marker so that it's past that trash space, which is not going to be useful later on. I want to be able to use the ring later and not feel sad about it. Then there's a question of how many troops to put in. And yes, I have a preference for not letting blue um, overtake me or even worse, win the entire conflict. Um, so I don't want to go too low. And maybe I overshot a little bit there. Maybe it would have been fine to just put in two troops, but I was a little bit worried about um, letting blue get too many combat rewards, and I felt like I had a pretty good situation with my troops. In retrospect, I wish I'd only put in two troops. So I redraw Stilgar and a Fremen card to go with it right away, which is good news. But I'm going to need to get some drawing going on. So looking at this hand, it would surprise me if I didn't immediately go to Arakeen and draw two. Something I'm thinking about some is whether to use detonation to break the wall. And the answer is, I don't think I should do that until it's at a combat where it genuinely matters. I don't think it really matters for these wall, these uh, stage two wall combats. Whether you can use worms or not, it's just like doubling the rewards is not that important, especially at this point in the game. Um, doesn't really matter if uh, I get four Solari or eight Solari. If I get second place and uh, there's only a limited number of troops that I can put in during a round because I only have two actions, no Swordmaster. So gaining four troops for winning would just be like, well, I just spent all my troops to get them back. Not very exciting. On the other hand, if I don't use the detonation, then having extra troops in my garrison actually can help. Here, I feel like putting in two troops is likely to get a reasonable reward. I don't know if it's going to be first or second, but um, I don't want other people to get stuff for free, and it's going to be not entirely worthless, so I'm just going for it. I drew another Fremen card, so again, Stilgar is revealing for six. And when you combine that with my two convincings, that's already 10. So uh, once again, I'm set. And it looks like the card that I'm going to play this round, uh, other than that, is, is, is the ring, because Fidei can still tent has a nice reveal, and the ring just has a nice effect on play. I can get another spy down. I'm out of spies. I want it, my rebel supplier to be active next round. So I've got one left in the deck. At this point, there's six cards left in my deck. Um, there's uh, Diplomacy, the Rebel Supplier, and then some crappy starting deck cards. Uh, two Dunes, Reconnaissance, and a Dagger, I think. So there's not a whole lot I can do with my ring here. Maybe what I should have done is collected some troops because I do have that detonation. Um, but I actually thought I might need to have uh, six troops left in, um, in my supply, um, or uh, six or seven, just so that I can gain enough troops uh, 
when I go to spaces next turn. Now it ends up being that the intrigue that I draw is uh, quite a good one. I get two spice to create three troops, and that seems like that's going to put me in a strong position for the combat next round, even though there are multiple players going ahead of me who can take Highliner. So despite the Guild Spy, I actually think I'm in a pretty good position at this point um, due to the Spice Freighter's combat and then a couple good draws with Stillguard letting me buy Spice Miss Flows despite not having invested any resources in High Council or anything like that. Really happy in retrospect with the round one early reveal for it. So because I didn't draw Diplomacy this round, uh, I wasn't able to lock in um, an Emperor Alliance. Uh, I also wasn't able to get my Bene Gesserit point, which I only need one more influence there to get that. So how do I get two points next round? As I alluded to, it looks to me like it's going to be the combat, because I know I'm getting Rebel Supplier and I have the three troops entry card. Other than the combat, it I don't see a way for me to get two, two points. I only see I could go to a Bene Gesserit space and get one influence there. That's one point, but it's pretty unlikely that I'd be able to buy a Spice Must Flow because, um, as I mentioned, there are six cards left in deck. So my first draw is definitely not hitting Stilgar, and how many draws can I really even get? Not that many. You know, I forgot to talk about my choice of where to put down the Spy. I actually waffled a lot between putting it by Arakeen and putting it by Siege Tabber, and I think both of them are plausible. Here was my thinking, though. Um, I think that next round, I'm going to use detonation to blow up the wall and go to uh, one of the worm spots. And then it's a question of, do I go to Siege Tabber first, get a third water, and then go to Deep Desert? Or do I get to, do I go to Arakeen, draw an extra card, and take Haga Basin? And here's my thought there. Um, it's actually pretty likely that I, Haga Basin won't be available to me um, because someone could go there just for the spice and I'm going last. So I decided I need to be able to go to Deep Desert. And because of that, I want to be able to Rebel Supplier, Recall My Spy at Siege Tabber, uh, and then Deep Desert with my second action. And I think there's a decent chance at that point that I can take down the combat. Um, you know, fingers crossed. Now, what actually happens is the combat is not one of the three victory point ones where I need to use detonation to blow up the wall, but instead it's the one where worms are already useful. So now it seems even more important that I didn't rely on being able to access Haga Basin. On the other hand, I didn't draw my Rebel Supplier. It's the last card in my deck, which is frustrating, but that's just how it is. So I think that means I'm not going to be able to play it for troops. Um, at best, it's going to give me one sword when I draw it, when I recall a spy. 
So now the question is going to be, when it gets to my turn, do I deviate at all from the plan of Siege Tabor and then Deep Desert? And one thing that's kind of scary about that is the possibility that red or yellow, who are on the High Council, using the intrigue that gets them to water so that they can go to Deep Desert. Now, yellow doesn't have any intrigues, but red has a couple intrigues. And I'm a little bit worried about that possibility. pretty good for me that yellow went for Highliner because um, I don't see yellow having much extra strength behind that. They don't have any intrigues. They do have two more actions, but there's no garrison and they're almost out of resources at this point. I think that's significantly better for me than red being able to go Highliner who has two intrigues and two troops in garrison. So interestingly, my opponents are talking about how to block me from going to a Bene Gesserit's face, which I am very happy for them to be worrying about because I'm not actually intending to use my diplomacy here unless the combat plans go south somehow. But Red is not interested in cooperating in this uh, collusion to block the Bene Gesserit spaces. Red, Red has his own plan, which is actually a pretty good plan, as it turns out. Um, but it is not going to involve blocking its secrets. Um. <clears throat> the final round of the game is often interesting in that you're trying to figure out what other people are aiming for. And if you can figure it out, then it's often possible to block them or at least interfere with their plans sufficiently that they're like severely inconvenienced and have one or two less points. And if the game's going to end, then that's really important. Here, it's unclear whether the game's going to end. My belief is probably the only way the game ends is if I win the combat. Um, or I guess it blew one the combat, but I don't see that happening. There's also maybe some ways. Uh, nope, I don't see a way for blue to get three points here because blue already has all their faction points at this point um, that are easily accessible. So red goes for Swordmaster first action. Um, I guess playing for the game to go another round, but this still seems like a mistake because it's not like, well, okay. He's worried about blue going for Swordmaster. Interesting. I definitely did not consider that blue might ever go Swordmaster here. Um, blue can go to Imperial Privilege, and um, I think doing that this round and next round is going to be better for them than Swordmaster, so I just... I just think there's basically no chance that they are interested in going for Swordmaster here. I was more thinking that they might go for High Council, but uh, even that is not really appealing at this point. It's more Imperial privilege, given that we're in round seven. Um, in the chat, I... And I'm trying to convince people that oh, I can't do anything. I'm not going to end the game. I'm just trying to collect resources for next round. In fact, I say I didn't even draw Diplo. I'm claiming that that's my last card. 
um, to explain why I'm not taking advantage of this obvious opportunity to get a victory point. Indeed, if I hadn't drawn Diplo and uh, I didn't have an intrigue that gave me three troops, this probably makes sense. So I did decide to go for Haga Basin. So going Haga Basin followed by Siege Tabor instead of Siege Tabor followed by Deep Desert. And it's a tough call. Um, but I do think that this is a little bit less risky. Um, it's leaving my second action for um, the place where I have a spy, so there's absolutely no way I can get blocked. There's no risk of Muad'Dib having the two water intrigue for being on the High Council and uh, ha having their other intrigue blow up the wall and going to Deep Desert, blah, blah, blah. Just not a consideration. Um, this also, I think, tells a better story of I'm not ending the game right now. Um, because sending in a worm to get like doubled second place rewards is just a totally normal, reasonable thing to do. It also has the drawback of blocking yellow a bit. Because I'm pretty confident that yellow wants to go there. They have a spy there, so I'm not like fully blocking them, but I'm blocking them from drawing a card. I think I'm being pretty annoying by doing that. Finally, if it does turn out that I need to not go for winning the combat this round because someone does something crazy and unexpected, uh, I think this puts me in a better position to, to switch plans and play my diplomacy instead. So we got a weird glitch here. Um, when blue went to imperial privilege it didn't seem to work so they're trying again after a rewind now it apparently worked but actually what they didn't notice and what no one noticed until a bit later is that sardaukar coordination is still in their discard pile it got locked somehow and so it didn't get shuffled in with the rest so when we figure that out we're going to end up deciding okay let's just shuffle it into Blue's deck right now. All right, so I go to Eric Heaton. What's, what's the deal there? Um, I want to draw my last card because it has a sword on it, and it also gives me a spice. What the heck, why not? Um, so that's one more combat strength. I want to commit as much strength as possible. That's going to a combat space, and one that gives one troop seems absolutely correct. Um, I could have gone to Siege Tabor and recalled the spy, but then I'd have one less spy on the board. And Fade lets me turn that spy into two strength. So I'm definitely preferring the path that keeps the spy on the board. And I don't need the water from Siege Tabor, so that's fine. I also think going to Arakeen again might be blocking yellow. Um, and indeed it was. Uh, looks like yellow wanted to go to Arakeen, draw an extra card, and maybe uh, have a shot at a Spice Missile this turn. Um, but they didn't end up having that. Now you may wonder why did not why did I not play my card that gives me three troops for two spice? And the answer is I only have one troop left in my garrison, so I can actually do that during my reveal turn because I have detonation anyway. I'm gonna play both of them, get four troops in. Now, if Blue hadn't gone to Imperial Privilege, I think I might have. Um, it spends my dagger, so that's minus one sword. 
it draws me one more card, which maybe ends up being more swords. I end up playing the Rebel Supplier, which is both minus one sword and plus four swords, because I get two extra troops when I recall my spy. So I think on that it's worthwhile, especially because it stalls out a little bit. But I didn't have that option, because blue went to Imperial Privilege. Um, now, if red had blocked secrets, I think blue might not have gone to privilege because then they'd be lifting their agent off of the espionage space and theoretically removing the block that was there that was preventing me from getting my Bene Gesserit influence. Um, but since I'd already shown that I didn't have the um, diplomacy card apparently to go to secrets, that probably wasn't a concern for them anymore. So I think I'm looking pretty good right now. I know Laminades does not have any intrigues. He doesn't have uh, cards with significant swords on them in his whole deck. I haven't tracked everything, but I'm assuming he's revealing for like zero to two here. Um, and I'm still gaining 10 strength during my reveal turn, 12 actually, uh, because I've got two swords in hand, the spider recall, and then four troops are going in. So at this point, I think I probably have this locked up, but it isn't totally certain. And red still does have two intrigues in one more turn. Also, blue has three intrigues, is gonna buy a spice miss flow, might have some end games, like that's a little bit scary and unknowable too, but there's nothing I can do about that. So it's all good. Red does indeed go into the combat with four troops, which is a little bit high for aiming for third place. So that's a bit suspicious. Either way, I'm just getting as much strength as I can. Lime didn't reveal any swords, so I've actually exceeded his strength by 10, apparently. Seems excessive, but um, I think in the tier three combats, you, you really have to get into the 20s to secure them. So red does indeed have 12 strength worth of intrigues. Uh, and I end up only winning by four strength. All right, what about end games? If blue has two end game points, I still have three more spice than him, so probably I'm fine. Okay, nope, I only have one more spice than him, but he only has the one end game point, so looks good. <laughs> 